Hello, and welcome to TMC's How To Demo Series for Dynamics 365 Business Central, where we explore the features of Business Central for basic tasks within your organization. If you can't find a demo you're looking for, let us know in the comments below, and we'll try to make it happen. Today, we're going to begin with basic CRM in Dynamics 365 Business Central. In part one of this CRM video, we'll cover the basic entities of the CRM module. In parts two and three, we'll walk through examples of interactions, opportunities, and marketing campaigns. My name is John Hoyt, Solutions Specialist for TMC. Let's get started. In this video, we'll begin with the basics in the CRM module. We'll work with contacts. We'll link contacts to an account either a customer or a vendor, and we'll create contacts from Outlook. Let's see how this works. I'm going to start by opening my Business Central instance. And in this case, I'm logged in as the Sales and Marketing Manager. And you can see all of their capabilities if you use the little function here. So I want to start simply by bringing up the contacts. Now, contacts in the Business Central system, like in most CRM systems, are the people that you work with. We draw a distinction between the people who represent as contacts and the accounts who will nominate as either a customer or a vendor. So here's my list of all the open contacts in the system. And let's take a look at some of the details that we'll be tracking. I'll open the record here for Ben. And like we've seen elsewhere in the Business Central system, the master record for Ben is divided into multiple tabs. We have a general tab across the top with his contact number, his name, and the company name that he's associated with. This will end up being linked to an appropriate contact record, either for an account or for a vendor later on in the process. In the Communications tab, we'll indicate address, mobile phone number, email address, all the means that we're going to use in terms of contacting him. If our contact works with a foreign entity of some type, when I would also have access to the Foreign Trade section, where I can nominate both the currency code that I want to use as a default, Mexican peso, Canadian dollars, etc., as well as a territory or a region division. And then finally, down at the bottom, for all of the contacts, we can create a profile questionnaire. And you can fill out the details on that questionnaire and capture information like their role, their title, their previous job experience, anything that you really want to add into that profile. And you'll see where that profile comes up in one of our later videos during the marketing section when we start to create a campaign segment. And we'll use the qualities or the ideas generated out of that profile to help us determine which one of our contacts we're going to segment and then market to for that particular campaign. On the right hand side, we've got information like we typically see in our fact boxes, add a picture, add attachments, and some general information about this particular contact and our experience with them. Now, once the contacts have been created, and again, remember, the contact is just a person. So we need to make an association now between the person, the contact record, and the company name, who they actually are associated with. In this case, Ben's associated with Abrams Legal Services. And so any of my activities with Ben could be viewed either by looking at his contact record or by going back through the uh, associated records with that particular company, whoever he's been linked to. I'm going to switch back out of that contacts view. We'll go back into the sales and marketing manager. <clears throat> and it's just as an example, if I pull up my customers list, I come down to Abrams Legal Service. Now when I look at that customer record, as I go through, I can add in the contact information that's appropriate for that, whoever that might be. In this case, it's going to be Ben Charles. So now I can start to make that link between who is a person, what is the organization that they work with, 
I can divide that into my customer contacts. I can divide that into my vendor contacts. And again, I'm just making that linkage between the people that I work with and the various companies that they are associated with. And we do this as a soft association. Right now, Ben is linked to Abrams Legal Services. But if Ben, for some reason, chose to leave that job and go to a different job, one of our other customers, perhaps, I can simply reassociate his contact record from Abrams Legal Services, and now I can associate him with a different company. The value here is I don't lose any of that prior contact information or any of that history. I still have all of those details. I'm just associating it with the current customer, not the previous customer record. And that same concept, of course, could apply for the vendors as well. As your contacts move from one vendor to another, we can track that movement and not lose any of their history. So let's turn our attention next to Microsoft Outlook because we could obviously create a new contact here directly inside the Business Central system. But for many people, the first point of contact may actually be something like an email. And in this case, I've gotten an email from someone who's going to be redecorating the conference room. They want to get a quote on a new table. They need some chairs also. And I can start from this email and come up to my Business Central connection in Outlook click on Contact Insights. Now, as the link gets made between Outlook and Business Central, I'll get prompted to get logged in here. And John Hoyt does not exist at the moment as a contact inside my system. So I'm given the option to add him in as a new contact, name, email address. He correctly shows as a person, but I could also be creating a contact that is simply a company. And I need to associate it to one of the companies inside my system. And I'll associate him with maybe Williams and Henry. <laughs> when I click OK, I'm now creating that relationship in the background between the little bit of information that I have about John, I don't have much at this point, and the company that he works for in the background. Now I could go through and I could add in some more information for this. I can do whatever updates I might want. But that's as simple, as, as easy as it is to create a contact based upon an email record. And then I can go in and start to work further with that. So in this video, we look through the basic components of the CRM module, the contact, the accounts, and working with those entities in Microsoft Outlook. In part two of this video series, we'll walk through tracking an opportunity and recording an interaction with a contact. In part three, we'll create and track a marketing campaign. That wraps up this video. If you have any questions or would like to make a suggestion on what we should cover in the next video, please comment down below. I'll do my best to answer your comments. If you need immediate technical support, I invite you to visit our website, abouttmc.com. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.